welcome back to BeHookedCrochet.com. In today's tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to crochet the spiral flower. This is a free pattern that's available up on my blog, and you can find the link to that pattern in the description below. This demonstration is going to include the large size flower, but know that a medium size and a small size is available up on my blog. You actually crochet them the same way, just the size of the hook and the amount of stitches are different. For this tutorial, you're going to need any worsted weight yarn and a size 5 millimeter crochet hook. Before we get started, I wanted to take a second to explain exactly how this spiral is constructed. So basically, we're going to start out with a ring in the center, and then we're going to chain a long chain that's going to start us off by making our first petal. And so essentially, all we're going to be doing is crocheting out the chain, and then we're going to be coming back, and then we'll be working our stitches along that previous petal so that this first one that we're going to make is going to serve as our foundation and then we're just going to keep going back and forth until we've reached the start and the very last petal is going to be stitched onto the first petal as you can see here this is my join okay so go ahead and grab your worsted weight yarn your size five millimeter crochet hook and we'll get started Okay, to start this pattern, we need to first create a slip knot. And to review slip knots, we're basically just going to take the tail end of our yarn and we're going to wrap it around the index finger of our non dominant hand two times. And we're going to pull that back strand, place it over the front, then pull the front strand up and over the tip of your finger. Then pull that knot tight and place the loop on your hook and secure your knot by pulling the working yarn. Now the pattern says that we first need to chain four and we're going to do so just by wrapping the yarn pulling it through the loop that was on our hook. That's your first chain. Two, three, and four. And in this step we're going to create the ring that's going to act as the center of our spiral flower. And to do that, we need to slip stitch into the first chain that we made. So what I need you to do is just insert your hook directly into that chain. I catch just one loop and that works just fine. Then yarn over and pull that through the chain and then pull it through the loop that was on your hook. Now at this point, the pattern says that we need to chain 13. And what we're doing here is we're creating our first petal. So we have to get a little bit creative in, in doing this first petal because of the direction that we crochet. We, uh, we basically have to make a foundation, but after we make the foundation, we're technically at the wrong point of our work. So we're gonna get a little bit creative here. Just follow along with me the best you can. Go ahead and chain 13. Okay, now once you've chained 13, we're going to slip stitch ourselves all the way back to the center because that's where we need to start. We need to start from the center and work our way back out each time we add a new petal. So since we're all the way out here, we've got to slip stitch our way back. So we're just going to we're going to skip the first chain that is right next to the hook or which is actually the last chain that we created. So we need to insert our hook into the second chain from the hook and then slip stitch. So pull yarn over, pull a, a strand through the chain and then again through the loop on your hook. And we'll do that for every chain. And that's going to give us a total of 12. So our petals are going to be 12 stitches long. Okay, but there's another little trick that we do in order to make 
the petals um, basically different they they appear to be different lengths but they're actually not so we'll, we'll talk about that trick a little bit later just continue slip stitching down your chain something to keep in mind too when you're slip stitching you want to make sure you do this relatively loose because we are going to be working into our slip stitches so if you know slip stitches have a tendency of being very tight when you work them just because of the, the way that they're worked. We tend to work up really close to the hook and the gauge is a little bit different on the hook there so they tend to be uh, a lot tighter and what I like to do is just make sure I push the work down to the proper portion of my hook before I pull that through and that, that helps me to keep my slip stitches loose. Okay, now I'm going to take a second and just count these to make sure I've got 12. Eleven and 12. Okay, now we've reached the, the loop that we created, which as you can see doesn't look much like a loop. What I like to do is grab the, the yarn here from each side, what I know to be the sides of the loop, and I pull on them. And I can see if you look at this this ring, you know this loop here that's forming, that's where it was slip stitched together. So that's not technically where I want to work, but you can see there's a little opening below that, and that's what I want to work into. So I like to slip my finger or try to slip the loop onto my finger the best I can, and that keeps it open so I know where to work. And now at this point, we need to slip stitch into the center of this ring. So the portion that I held open. I'm just going to slip stitch like normal. Now this next part we have to get a little bit creative. Alright, so what we're looking at here is technically the bottom of our petal. And essentially we need to start working from here and work our way out. But as you can see, we essentially have our flower upside down right now. So we basically need to get ourselves to the point where we can work into this first stitch here. And the way we're going to do that, just hold your work in your hand so it looks just like this, and then I just need you to take it and rotate it. That way you've got your ring over on this side and your petal coming out over here, the same side as your working yarn. And now we technically could go ahead and start working in these stitches, but our yarn is coming from the bottom of the work and that's going to make things look a little bit funny in the long run. So what I need you to do is insert your hook into the center of your ring and then slip stitch. So yarn over and pull that through the ring and then through the loop on your hook. And now that's going to get us to where we need to be. Now this is probably the most difficult part of the flower so if you followed along give yourself a little pat on the back. Now what we need to do is start creating the petals. And I've mentioned before that we have to do something a little bit creative to get this effect that we see here where it looks like the petals are shorter. Like each round it looks like it's shorter. And we're not actually decreasing the number of stitches that we use. We're actually, instead of making 12 stitches like we have been doing, once we finish this, we're going to have a total of 15. So keep an eye out for that. I'll, I'll point it out when we get to that point. What we want to do first is we need to single crochet into the first stitch. And now the first one's a little bit difficult to see and we're going to be working in the back loop only. So what we see here, this was basically the chain that we created and this back loop here is where we want to work. So you have to kind of fool with it just a little bit to get your hook under there and slip stitch. So you'll yarn over, pull up a loop, then yarn over and pull through two. And that's your single crochet. 
Now we need to create a half double crochet into the next two stitches. So we need to yarn over, insert our hook again into that back loop only, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. Now I want to do that one more time, yarn over, insert your hook into that back loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops. Okay, now the next sequence that we're going to do, the next stitch, we're going to put two double crochets into that same stitch. And this is where we're getting a little bit sneaky. We're adding in extra stitches, and that way we're going to have a higher number of stitches when we come back around. And so that's going to give it the effect of being shorter. So insert, first yarn over, insert your hook into that next stitch just the back loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. Now we're going to do that again into the same stitch. Okay, now for the next stitch we're going to put one double crochet. And in the next stitch, we're going to do a treble crochet. And to make a treble crochet, we want to yarn over twice. So wrap and wrap, and then insert your hook into that back loop, yarn over, pull up a loop. Then we're going to walk ourselves back. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. And so by changing the stitches like this, we're creating that that look that we have where it starts out kind of small in the center and then it fans out so we're we're making our stitches taller to give us that effect. Now the next stitch we're going to put two treble crochets so yarn over two times and sew your hook into the next back loop and then yarn over pull through two, yarn over pull through two, yarn over pull through two and then do that one more time into the same stitch. Now for the next stitch we're going to put one treble crochet. Now the next stitch we are going to put a double treble and the way we do that is yarn over three times. So one, two, and three. And then we are going to insert our hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. Now at this point you should have five loops on your hook and we're going to pull through two at a time. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. That's the double treble. Now we're going to do that again into the next stitch. So yarn over one, two, and three times and then finish off your stitch just like we did before. Okay. The next stitch we're going to put two double trebles into the next stitch. So wrap three times, finish off your stitch, now one more time into the same stitch, double treble, wrap three times, And now we have one more stitch to work into and we are going to put a, a, a double treble into that stitch, so just one. So wrap three times again and then work your stitch. So essentially what we've done is we have increased three times. So we have added three extra stitches. We started out with 12 chains 
well, technically we started out with 13, but since we used one as a turning chain, that gave us 12 stitches to work into. And we added three on top of that. So now we have a total, if you count, you should count 15 stitches all the way back down. What we wanna do at this point is chain two, so one and two, and we'll turn our work and get started going back down towards the center. Once you've chained two, you'll need to turn your work. And now what we're gonna do is slip stitch our way all the way back down until we reach the ring. And we wanna do so in the back loops only. Now if you look at your work here, it's easier for you to see the first stitch if you turn your work up towards the top. So I can see I've got a chain and a chain, so I know that this one is my first stitch since I made two chains. And the purpose of the two chains is to give the petal a little bit of a point at the end. So we're gonna do that every single time. But I need you to slip stitch one time into each of the next 15 stitches in the back loop only. So the slip stitch, remember we just insert our hook into chain, yarn over, pull through and through. And again, you wanna make sure that you do this a little bit loose because it, it's gonna give your work a better tension. Now, technically, from this point on, we're not actually gonna be working into the slip stitches when we create the rest of our chains. This is just gonna serve as basically a ridge dividing each of the petals. And so something to look out for, I'm gonna go ahead and point out right now. These are, the, these are the stitches that I'm making. So this V, all of these Vs, that's the slip stitch that I'm creating. But if you look right here, you can see an extra ridge. And that is the remaining loop. So that's the front loop of what we're working into now. So I've got the back loop is where I'm working the slip stitch and then I've got this extra loop right here. This loop is very important because that's where we're gonna create the foundation for our next, our next petal. So just keep that in mind. You wanna keep the slip stitches loose enough so that way you can see this extra loop because that's where we're gonna be creating our next petal. You may also find it helpful to count as you go. This is one of those patterns that you really have to pay attention. And I'll be honest, the first couple of times that I did this, I found myself having to rip my work out and go back over and, and you know, basically do it over and over because I wasn't counting as I went along. Um, once you do a few of these, you get to the point where you know what stitches you need to work into but when you're first starting out, I tell you what, it's, it's a little bit challenging, I'm going to be honest. Okay, so now this is my last slip stitch, but just in case, I'm going to count my work. And I have caught an extra loop there. Okay, there we go. Just had to fix a little oops there. Now I'm going to count and make sure I have 15 slip stitches. So, 14 and 15. Okay, so we're good to go there. Now we need to find the center of our ring again, which is probably collapsed at this point. It gets easier to work into the more petals you do. But find your center and slip stitch into the center of the ring. And now what we need to do from here is chain one. And that's because we have to turn our work and we're starting off with a single crochet. So flip your work and we'll get started on the next row. Okay, once you've got your chain one, I'm just gonna pause for a second. I'm gonna go back to this flower that we've started just because I wanna point out that we're basically gonna end up with four empty stitches. Okay, so just keep that in mind. It's gonna help you to until you get used to 
recognizing the stitches that you need to work into, it helps if you count back 12 stitches and then wherever you end up, it should leave you with four empty stitches. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Now, we've chained one, which you can see right here. We're gonna go ahead and start off that, basically the same petal sequence that we did before. Our first stitch is the single crochet, and we're gonna do so into this back loop here, and this is basically the last slip stitch that we created. So we're gonna go ahead and single crochet into that stitch. And now, remember how I mentioned before that we're not actually gonna be working into our slip stitch. We're gonna be working into the front loops of the previous row. So I'm turning my work here so you can see those front loops. Now I'm gonna remove my hook real quick. Okay, these V's right here are my slip stitches. That is what we do not want to work into. Now if you do, it's not the end of the world. It basically is just gonna create a larger ridge for us by leaving both of these unoccupied. What we want to find are these extra little loops that are sitting right next to each one of those slip stitches. That's what we're going to work into. So in turning my work, I can see the very first one is right here, and this one's a little bit difficult to locate. I, I had a tendency of starting off in the second one, and it used to always make me be off one stitch every single time, so I was having to rip back all the time. But basically, you want to find that first extra loop, and we're going to half double crochet into that loop. There we go. Sometimes that one's a little hard to get into. So half double crochet into that stitch. Once you get that first one in, it kind of seems like a piece of cake from here because you can see the very next stitch is clear. It's right there. We're going to half double crochet into that loop. Now the next thing we need to do is two double crochet into the next stitch. So we're going to yarn over, locate that loop behind the slip stitch, and complete our double crochet. And we're going to do that again into the same loop. Now the next stitch we need to do one double crochet. So find that back loop. The next one we're going to do a treble crochet, so wrap two times. Now the next one we need to do two treble crochets. So yarn over twice, locate that next stitch, and place two treble crochets into that stitch. Okay, next one, one treble crochet. There we go. Now we want to do a double treble into the next stitch, so wrap three times. locate your next stitch there. And do a double treble into the next stitch as well. So wrap again three times. Okay, and then we're going to put two double trebles into the next stitch. And 
and do another double treble, same stitch. And then we're going to put one double treble into our last stitch. So essentially we have created basically 12 sets of stitches if you want to call it. So with that we should have four empty stitches and you can see one, two, three, and four empty stitches. That's exactly what we want. And now we'll get started on the, the forward pass or the back pass to go into the center of the ring. Now that we've reached the end of the row, essentially that's our pattern repeat. We're going to chain two at the end of this row, just like we did for the previous petal. We're going to flip our work and we're going to slip stitch once into each of every single stitch. And again, there should be 15. So you want to make sure you slip stitch 15 times. If you don't, your count is going to be a little off and therefore your petal is going to look a little lopsided. So you want to make sure you count. Okay, once you've slip stitch 15 times, we're going to slip stitch again into the center of the ring. So as you can see, it should look something like this. And so you're hooked just into that ring and slip stitch. Now chain one, turn your work, and we're set up for the next petal. Now we'll go through this petal one more time. We're going to have a total of 12 of these petals before we have to join. And essentially every single petal now is the same. So you, you've had, you've seen a demonstration a few times. And so you should be able to just go back if you need to go back and review uh, some of the points in this video to finish up. That's perfectly fine. But we'll go through it one more time and then we'll jump forward and I'll show you how to finish off this spiral flower. So from here, we're going to skip that chain that we just made. We're going to single crochet into that back loop. Now we're going to pull our work forward and we're going to find the first stitch that we need to work into. And I can see it is this loop right here. Now we're going to have double crochet. So I need to yarn over and then I'm going to insert my hook just into that loop there and then finish off my half double crochet. Now I'm going to look forward again and I find the next loop is right here that I need to work into. And that is going to be a half double crochet as well. Now for the next stitch, we're going to do two double crochets into the next stitch. So I just find that loop there. And then double crochet again. Now if you find that it's a little too confusing for you to, to work into the these loops right here, which are basically the front loops from the previous round, you can definitely work into your slip stitches. I would recommend just doing the back loop only of the slip stitch because then you're still going to have somewhat of a ridge separating each of the petals. 
but you know this this method if you can get used to it is worth it I think because it gives it a little bit more definition in between the two petals and it gives it a 3d effect I mean you can actually see the uh, the height difference and I think that looks pretty cool so either way you can work into these back loops if you're having trouble with these this extra set of loops right there okay so that's definitely an option now we've just created two double crochets into that last stitch and we're gonna do one double crochet into the next stitch and then we're gonna do a treble crochet so we yarn over two times and so your hook into that loop and then work your treble crochet the next stitch is going to get two treble crochets so yarn over twice again There we go. Now let's see. We're doing two treble crochets into this stitch. Okay, next stitch we want to do one treble crochet. So yarn over twice. Now we're going to do a double treble, so yarn over three times. Keep dropping my stitches. We're going to do a double treble into the next stitch. And then we're going to put two double trebles into the next stitch. Yarn over three times. There's one. I'm going to do that again into the same stitch. And then we're going to put a double treble into the last stitch. Okay, and I want to check to make sure I have four stitches remaining. So one, two, three, and four. I do. So I know I've done everything right at this point. And now we just need to chain two, turn our flower, and then put a slip stitch into every single stitch. So like I said, it's going to be 15 stitches. Okay, now once you've got your 15 slip stitches, 
Don't forget to slip stitch again into the center of your ring to pull everything together. Okay, and now essentially what we're going to do at this point, I'm going to go ahead and finish crocheting my nine petals that are remaining. And just know that they are going to be the exact same as what I've demonstrated so far. So go ahead and pause your video, crochet the remaining nine petals so you have a total of 12. And when I come back, I'll demonstrate how we secure the, the first and the last petal together. We'll bind off and our flower will be finished. Okay, now at this point, I have crocheted all 12 of my petals. Now don't forget that you still need to slip stitch down the very last one and you still need to slip stitch into the center of the ring. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and bind off. So just cut a little bit of working yarn. Now, well, you want to leave it about 10 inches or so because we're going to use that tail to sew the two together. And once you've cut your working yarn, just go ahead and pull that long strand through the loop that was on your hook to bind off and then pull that tight. Now you should have something that looks like this. And essentially what we need to do, we can take this extra little tail, which was the, the start of our work, and I'll just pull that through the center of the flower. And basically all we need to do at this point is to sew these two together. And we want to try to make sure that this seam matches the others all the way around. So we need to be careful that we are sewing into the proper loops. Now this seam isn't completely invisible. Here's the one that I have finished and you can see this is the seam where I have sewn it up. Now, you can't really tell unless you know what you're looking for. Essentially, all we need to do, go ahead and flip your flower so it's upside down. And you want to thread your darning needle. And what we need to do is make sure that we're catching each of the stitches along this portion here and then that's going to leave us with four extra at the end just like when we were crocheting all the way around we have this we want to have the same number of extra stitches so that way it matches and what I like to do is I like to basically catch this entire section under and that way I'm using this seam right here as my edging so it matches this and this and I like to try to hide this part under there the best that I can and I do that by catching both strands of the slip stitch that we just created so I'm going into my first one that's my first stitch there I've got my darning needle under both of those loops and essentially what I want to do then is catch this back strand kind of like we were doing when we were crocheting along we weren't actually going into the slip stitch we were going into the row behind it so once I do that I can just pull it tight and essentially all I'm doing is whip stitching so you go in to the next stitch find that next loop that's behind your slip stitches and you want to pull it pretty tight that way it's going to pull this side here up under pretty nicely and, and you can't see it as well
Okay, once you get your last one in there, then you can just kind of weave this in just like you would if you were finishing off a regular project. Now I like to try to find a pretty dense portion to work my tail ends in and so this seam that we've just created is a pretty good place for us to hide this tail. So I like to just go back and forth a couple of times to make sure the tail is not going to work itself out. And then just go ahead and cut off the extra. And there we go, we've got our seam done. Now the only thing that we have left to deal with is this tail that we had from the start of the flower. So I'm just going to go ahead and work this into a few stitches. My, my tail's a little short this time, so I would recommend you keep a tail that's a little bit long so you can work them in. And I'm just going to work them into the stitches that are directly on this ring. Okay, so once you have it pretty secure, then you can go ahead and just cut that off. And our flowers are done. Now at this point, you may want to wet block it. As you can see, the, the points do tend to uh, they like to, you know, fold upwards a little bit. However, they do cooperate pretty well just by finger blocking them. As you can see here, they've laid down pretty well. Um, I have wet blocked this and I do like the result. So that's another option depending on what you're going to use this for. Now, I know probably a few of you are going to ask if you can make this into a motif. And I am not sure. <laughs> Um, it may be possible for you to turn this into a square. I have not attempted this. I intended to use this and to make this design as an embellishment. So it would be great to embellish a headband or a purse, a hat, um, anything that you can think of that needs a really cool embellishment. This is, as you can see, a pretty large size. It's a, about as big as my entire hand. So I wanted to do the demonstration on the large size because as you saw, it's kind of tricky to find the loops that you need to work into. And then we've got our medium size here, which is actually worked in the same yarn. And this may be a little more suitable for, you know, a hat or a headband. Um, more so, you know, something smaller. Um, because as you can see, it's considerably smaller than the large one that we created. And then from here, we've got the small one, which I, I'm actually going to be using this to go on a headband for a newborn photo prop. So it's, you know, considerably smaller than the other two. So I would recommend probably using the smaller side for your smaller embellishment needs for, you know, baby products or whatever. Now you can find all three patterns available on my blog. You can find the link to that post in the description below. Just know that this demonstration is only on the large size. However, the other two sizes, the medium and the small, are created in the exact same way. They just have a different number of chains and a different pattern of stitches to create the petals. So just follow along with those patterns as if you were following along with this demonstration and you should have no problem at all to create the medium and the small size. On behalf of BeHookedCrochet.com, I'm your host, Brittany. This has been a free pattern and free video tutorial on the spiral flower. We'll see you next time.